Welcome to the YouTube video channel for my new book, Seed of Israel, DNA Guide to Tracing Your Jewish Ancestry, available on Amazon in ebook and paperback versions. Links to order your copy are below. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button to get more videos like this. In this video, I'm going to just really quickly go over a new feature uh, following up. This is following up on my previous video on the uh, Vahuduo online mixture modeling tool, um, adding Euro, the GED match, GED match, admixture calculators um, to the um, mixture modeling tool. And uh, I will leave a link to the previous video so you can take a look at that. And I give instructions on how to um, Basically, copy and paste your admixture percentages into the target and then uh, run the tool and you can see your distance to the populations for most uh, but not all of the GEDmatch calculators. And you can um, also get your, um, your uh, values, your top population values as well as far as your uh, modeling your, uh, your admixture. Um, and what they did recently was they added ancient, uh, components to Eurogene's K15. Um, so it's basically the same, um, same routine. Uh, you run the admixture calculator as you normally would on GEDmatch. You copy and paste your, your percentages from the different populations and put it into target. And then I'm just going to show you what my results are real quick. And here it is. Vaho Duo tools for GEDmatch calculators. You scroll down to Eurogenes, <clears throat> click on K15 ancient, and these are the ancient DNA samples taken from various um, genetic studies, excavations around the world um, from different periods, from the Bronze Age to Chocolithic to the Iron Age to Neolithic to the Middle Ages, etc. And yeah, so and they're in individual samples and they are uh, updated with the most recent, including the, uh, the huge study they did on ancient Roman DNA samples. Um, so yeah. And uh, I'm just going to show you my results real quick. And then uh, I'm going to go over um, a couple of uh, articles that uh, I think are kind of interesting as far as the uh, ancient populations that I get. So these are the, um, this is the uh, admixture uh, modeling, mixture modeling uh, that I get. And using the uh, Eurogenes K15 ancient. And as you can see, it's a lot of uh, Levantine Middle Eastern um, at the top. And then also uh, a bunch of, a lot of European results as well. Uh, and this is basically what the Ashkenazi average uh, gets as well. And I am Ashkenazi Jewish. Um, and it kind of just reflects, you know, our, our Middle Eastern roots and the Levant and the uh, European admixture that we picked up in the diaspora. Uh, because we are we descend from Jews in the um, Mediterranean uh, diaspora from the Hellenistic period and the Roman period who migrated northwards. And so I get Can uh, Canaanite at 10.6 and then Mina Gladiator York 3 DRIF 26. And that's a real interesting uh, that's a real interesting DNA sample right there. And what that, what that is, is they they found a bunch of headless Roman gladiators. Um, let's just find this article here. So, yeah. So, yeah, the mystery of the headless gladiators of York. DNA analysis of decapitated remains sheds light on Roman migrations. So, yeah, this is um, an article from the Daily Mail. And so six of the individuals they found, they found a mass grave in York, believed to contain Roman gladiators. And six of them were similar to modern Welsh. 
And then one had genetic affinities with people from North Africa and the Middle East. And that was the one that I got. Um, the second uh, population there that you saw after Canaanite. And uh, yeah, so one individual has had genetic affinities with people from North Africa and the Middle East, providing evidence of long-scale migration in Roman times. And then another article in the National Geographic quotes, let's see... Yeah, the paper was published in the journal Nature Communications in 2016. And it quotes Trinity College Dublin geneticist Dan Bradley, who says of uh, the, uh, the Mina Roman gladiator that uh, the nearest genetic matches were from Palestine or Saudi Arabia. Bradley says he did, definitely didn't come from Europe. And then he... Uh, Let's see. He says, this Near Eastern chap really, really stands out. He was from somewhere arid and hot. Um, oh, oh, this is uh, quoting. Who is this quoting? Gundula Mulder of the University of Reading. So she says that this Near Eastern chap really, really stands out. He was from somewhere arid and hot. Where he fits best is the Nile Valley or an environment like that. We can't pinpoint it exactly, but somewhere in the Near East. So I'll leave I'll leave links to those, and yeah, we get Jordan uh, more Levant Jordan Early Bronze Age, and get some a couple of uh, uh, Iranian uh, results there, Chalcolithic Iranian, and then a little farther down, Late Medieval Iranian, and uh, Cheddarman. And these are uh, European results. I'm not going to go into all of them. Um, you could do a Google search and uh, see where these uh, these DNA samples, uh, where the excavations took place, what their genetic affinities are to modern populations. But we got Cheddarman, Beaker Britain, Mako Culture Hungary, Beaker North Italy, Scythian Moldova, Halstead Celt, Bronze Age Orkney Islander, um, and we got another Levant result, Levant pre-pottery Neolithic B, and then Kostenki, Kostenki, uh, another European result, Kova Chetel Angel, um, that's a uh, result from uh, southern Spain, and then another Jordan sample, Jordan Early Bronze Age sample, EBA, late medieval Iran, and Sidon, which is uh, uh, excavation in Lebanon, in Sidon, Lebanon. Um, so yeah, and then I get some lower percentages that I'm not going to go into because it's a bunch. But yeah, I mean, you can see, you know, you can see the Levant and myself and other Ashkenazi Jews, and you can see the, Euro the European results as well. Which, you know, the, the European results, um, you know, the people who didn't, who are, did not leave the Levant, uh, the Middle East, you know, such as Samaritans, for example, who are very, uh, probably the closest uh, proc modern population that's the closest approximation to the ancient Israelites. Uh, you know, they almost get uh, exclusively Levant, ancient Levant, Canaanite, uh, Jordan, EBA, etc. And they, they do not get these, uh, you know, uh, populations like Cheddarman or Beaker Britain or Beaker or Mako Culture Hungary, Beaker North Italy, Scythian, Moldova, etc. So just reflecting some of the admixture that was uh, picked up in the uh, diaspora, and then so what I what what you can do is um, you can let's see you can add oh by the way I did sixteen cycles sixteen cycles so I think it's more accurate when you do more cycles. And then you can add a, a distance column at 0 0.25, 0 0.5 times, one time, and two times. So I do two times. I did two times, and uh, with a distance column, and so that just factors in the um, populations that you're the closest to. And so when I do that, I get 78.4. Iron Age, Prenestina, Celicata, R437, 14.6%, Iron Age, Ardea, dash 
R850 7.0 Iron Age Proto Villanovan Martin Martin Sicaro R1. And so these are uh, results from the Iron Age Central Italy and either, you know, in the near, near Rome, uh, uh, south of Rome, east of Rome, um, but uh, Roman Italy from the Iron Age. And so if you take the, uh, the, these DNA samples, as I stated earlier, are taken from a uh, really interesting study that was done recently um, that found that many Imperial Romans had roots in the Middle East. And yeah, the, um, they use genomes from 127 people buried at 29 archaeological sites in and around the city of Rome. Um, going back 12,000 years. And the title of the study is Ancient Rome, a Genetic Crossroads of Europe in the Mediterranean. And I made a video about this study. That's really interesting. And so I kind of wanted, I wanted to see what they said about some of these DNA samples that um, show up on myself, my results, and also the Ashkenazi, Ashkenazi Jew average for when you add the distance column to uh, the Vahaduo tool, online mixture modeling tool with uh, Eurogene's K15. Um, so I downloaded the let's see supplementary materials and what they say about the the two that i get at the top which are again prinestina celicata r437 and ardia r850 and so what do they say about those two? Well, what they say is that two-way models fit well for R437 and R850. Uh, Rome, Imperial, RMPR, dash uh, underscore CA plus Armenia underscore LBA and RMPR underscore CA plus Anatolia underscore IA SG. In both models, the incoming source population is temporarily proxim proximate to the Iron Age Italian samples, and their geographic locations point to ancestry input from the Near East. Strikingly, R437 and R850 both carry more ancestry from the incoming source than the preceding local population highlighting the substantial influence of this Eastern influence on the genetic makeup of Central Italians in Iron Age. Furthermore, the influence of this Eastern ancestry is not limited to R437 and R850, as R1016 and R1015 can, be, can also be modeled as RMPR underscore CA plus Anatolia underscore IA dot SG, and R1016, but not R1015, as R RMPR underscore CA plus Armenia underscore LBA. So, yeah, basically, their um, you know their their modeling indicates that there was a Near Eastern ancestry ancestral input in Iron Age Central Italy, and um, you know, basically the uh, you know the Rhineland hypothesis of uh, Ashkenazi Jews. Uh, migrating from Israel to Italy, um, up the boot of Italy to the Rhineland, and then eastward migrations from the Rhineland to um, other areas in Central Europe and then Eastern Europe. And so basically Ashkenazi Jews descend from Italkim, from Italian Jews, who were Roman Jews. So we have a, a strong genetic affinity to um, Italian Jews, um, also Sephardic Jews, um, Romanio, Greek Jews, uh, North African Jews, you know, Mor Moroccan Jews, Algerian Jews, Tunisian Jews, Libyan Jews, and then also um, Southern Italians, um, Sicilians, Maltese, Greek, Greek Cretans, Greek Maylanders, other Greek Islanders, Cypriots, and then 
um, a little more distantly, um, our original Levantine ancestry, also Turks, Turkish people, and also, you know, Lebanese, uh, Palestinians, uh, Samaritans, Jordanians, Druze, um, Syrians, um, Israeli Arabs, etc. And so uh, thank you for watching.